all the leaves are brown, and the sky is grey. I went for a walk on a winter's day. I'd be safe and warm if I was in L.A. Some of you may not have got that reference, but it's important because what we're going to be talking about here is seasonality. And seasonality affects the way that you trade the markets, but also how you structure your entire year. If you're interested in Betfair trading and you want to learn how to trade, then visit the Academy where you can do exactly that. If you want to talk to professional Betfair traders, then why not head over to our forum where you can talk to like-minded people, but you can also download additional content. And don't forget to head over to our website to download a copy of BetAngel, the cutting edge software that will completely transform your trading. So the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. That means that we're heading into winter and it's important to note that seasonality uh, will have an effect on the way that you trade. It's something that a lot of people miss. And I remember when I first started trading, especially on horse racing, I just had a great summer um, I was getting better and better and then it suddenly fell off of a cliff and my initial thought was that perhaps I was doing something wrong or there was some uh, you know something had just like completely changed but the fact is something had changed but it wasn't what I thought it was actually the seasons that had changed and they had um, an unusual effect on my trading so initially I was worried about that but nowadays I'm completely familiar with the cycle um, and that changes the way that I trade at certain times of the year. This affects all sports and if you look at football for example when the football season kicks off in August then you don't really have any strong indication of which teams are going to perform or underperform at that particular moment in time and then basically as the season begins to progress you begin to understand how those dynamics are likely to play out. Managers get sacked typically before Christmas um, and then you get the January tra transfer window. So each one of those sort of phases, and then of course we have the run in, in in May as well, each one of those phases will behave slightly differently as the incentives for teams to perform uh, change over the course of the season. So necessarily that means that the start of the season is probably where you'll find the most inefficient markets. The middle of the season is where you will find the most efficient markets. And then as we come into the tail end of the season, that's often where you will find a number of surprises. But also because as the season wears on, you get a number of injuries and you get fixture congestion and so on. So can you see there, there's a good example of the way um, that the efficiency of the market and the way the market trades varies over the course of the year. Now, when you look at racing markets, they also have distinct seasonality. Um, if you look at the way that um, my results come in over the course of the year, um, they're very heavily skewed towards the peak areas of the year. So very often you will see me working incredibly hard. I recently uh, traded the Melbourne Cup. I also traded the Breeders' Cup and also there was lots of UK racing going on around that time. So I was sticking in days of 22 hour shifts and that seems a bit extreme and a bit crazy. But in fact, that is just a response to the opportunities that are available within the market. You will not see me in December doing a 22 hour day because the markets change and shift and that radically affects uh, my ability to be able to do things with it. Um, but just how impactful is seasonality within horse racing? Well, it's important that we take a slightly deeper dive at this and I'll show you some numbers so that you can understand how that would affect your trading. So if we look at this graph, you can see that there are many peaks and troughs within here. And it's important to point out that these peaks and troughs will be different for different people. So I trade lots of different things, um, but you can sort of explain some of these peaks and troughs quite clearly. So the big peak that you see in March is because of Cheltenham. Then you see another peak in June. Uh, typically there'll be tennis in the UK. There could be a football tournament on, and of course we have Royal Ascot. And then you have a peak later in the year, which will be the tail end of the flat season when we have things like Champions Day and some of the big race meetings and high profile group racing. So when we look at the difference between, for example, the flat and the jump season, there will be um, quite a, a radical difference in the way that the markets behave. Because one of the things that is obvious on the jumps racing is that the volumes are lower. Whether you like it or not, people bet more money on the flat racing. So necessarily, uh, you will see um, a lot more money on flat racing than you do on the jumps. 
Um, so that's not particularly conducive um, to having, um, you know, the markets that could even be remotely near as strong as some of the flat racing markets. You also have the weather impact as well. Lots more meetings get cancelled in the winter than in the summer. So that will have an impact on the number of markets that you can trade. And also talking about lower volume, that tends to bring lower liquidity with it as well. So the markets can be a little bit more jumpy and spiky. Um, they change their behaviour somewhat. But also think about um, when you're looking at different parts of the season, certainly from a horse racing perspective, at the beginning of each season, you tend to get maidens, horses that haven't raced before. And as a consequence, uh, people don't know what the price should be. If the horse has got no form, they can't particularly price the market, they can't give it a rating. And as a consequence, people are going to be second guessing all of the time. And that tends to make the markets move a lot more violently because the momentum within the markets is very strong because people look to the markets for a clue as to which horse they think is going to be favoured. You know, the stable whispers are out there. Um, is the money going to follow? Yes, it is. Let's pile in after that. But as the form begins to develop, then you don't tend to get um, as much of that sort of activity within the market. People know how the horses run. It's got an official rating um, and they pretty much know the race is set up and what odds the horses should be. But also have a think about the way that you would trade horse racing at different times of the year. During the flat season, um, you've, you know, a five furlong race will take a minute to win it. Um, and there will be varying lengths of that, but basically the races will start and finish fairly quickly. Um, and then you have a long gap until the next race, usually. And as if Sandown is running, in which case it will clash. But typically what will happen is that you get a much longer period of time to actively trade the market. So picking up a trend that's moving smoothly in one direction is quite easy to do during the flat season. However, when we look at the jump season, obviously the races take a lot longer to run. So people don't know the result of the prior race or a race somewhere else until that race is finished. And therefore, uh, most of the money gets crunched into a smaller period of time. And that can make the markets a little bit more violent. So you have sort of all of that money arriving just that little bit later and it changes the way that you should trade rather than going for big, nice, giant, lovely um, swings in one direction or another, it's probably gonna be a little bit more violent. So typically um, the racing markets will trade sort of fairly differently um, ac across the different uh, racing codes, um, but also at different times of the year, you'll see that impact as well. So over the course of the year, seasonality will affect the way that you actively trade. My response to that is to basically modify my behavior within the markets, but also realize that there's no way in the winter that I could ever possibly achieve the same sort of totals that I get in the summer. It's just not gonna happen for a number of reasons. So I work intensely hard at certain times of the year. And uh, during those times, I will stick in some really serious hours. So you would have seen me um, post sort of 22 hour days uh, during peak periods of the year, simply because there are so many opportunities available you don't want to miss them. Um, but also that creates the buffer for you for the quieter times of the year when things begin to shift and change around um, and perhaps the opportunity isn't as much um, as it could be. But you know everybody will have their own level of seasonality so I gather a lot of you will trade many different types of sports um, but it's something you should take into account in similar or the same way in which you're hearing me talk about here. But during those quieter times of the year, I take the opportunity to just chill out, relax, start working on new things. But I also travel as well. I don't tend to holiday during peak periods because it's so damn expensive. Um, and plus the money that I make during those uh, busy periods, I can spend at other times of the year doing some sort of great adventure somewhere. And in my normal career, I used to travel a lot. And I knew that when I started this, I wanted to try and continue that. Um, so during the quieter months of the year, I will very often um, go off and do a bit of an adventure somewhere. I made that classic mistake, uh, first of all, of just trying to find some beach somewhere and, and just sitting on it. But I figured out that that just wasn't me. Um, it was interesting and exciting to start with, but it soon uh, the novelty of that soon wore off. So I started hiking. So I don't know if anybody out, out there does that, but I started climbing mountains, hiking them, trekking, doing all sorts of weird and wonderful adventures, um, and gradually exploring all sorts of different parts of the world that I'd never ever seen before. And uh, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, but for me being out in the wilderness on your own uh, with just a backpack um, and uh, yourself basically, I was looking for the right word there, 
um, I find um, quite interesting and exciting, especially uh, when you're in the true wilderness where you've got all manner of things uh, creeping around you in the middle of the night. It just makes you feel a little bit more alive. I'm by the coast. However, I could be pretty much anywhere. I could be near a stream, somewhere deep in a forest. Or maybe trekking to the top of a volcano. I can spend some time doing all of those things that I always wanted to do. So what I'd hoped to, to do in um, previous years was basically try and gradually trek to higher and higher altitude so that I could have a pop at something maybe at very high or extreme altitude at some point um, over the next few years. Gotta say, this is just an incredible landscape. I didn't realise when you see the pictures, it doesn't look as big as, as it is. But when you take a look at this thing, it's a beast. It's absolutely massive. But unfortunately, the pandemic put the kibosh on that. And um, I'm going to have to sort of restart that experience again as soon as I get the opportunity. But yeah, seasonality will affect your trading. Um, it's important to understand how it will affect your trading because that will alter what you do, but also it won't allow you to set false expectations. And if you know when your peak and quieter times of the year are, um, then necessarily you can focus on those to maximize the opportunity that's there. If you're just starting out, you probably won't detect seasonality because you're just trying to settle in to a pattern of behavior. But if you have, uh, have a bit of experience behind you or you're going through the cycle at the moment, you don't have to be particularly worried that you've lost your edge or there's something weird going on. It's just the way that the markets act at certain times of the year. So make hay while the sun shines. And when you get the chance to have a rest, have a rest because next year I'm sure you're going to be bigger, stronger and better than ever.